Welcome back to Colster's Classroom. One of the things I've seen a lot of posts about on social media that newer teachers are struggling with is chatty students. How do you handle students who are talking while you're talking? Let's talk about that. The first thing I would tell you is that you have to train the students what your expectations are. If they don't understand your expectations, you can't expect them to stop talking when you're talking. So I look at it as coaching a basketball team or any other sport that you have to practice. You have to practice what we refer to as a reticular activation routine to get these students to behave the way you want them to. Uh, and again, that requires practice, sometimes for several days in a row. One thing I've learned over the last 25 years is that students crave structure and they crave discipline. They really, really want it. You never find that students really love those teachers that don't have classroom control where everybody's doing what they want to do. The students really like those classes where the teachers have really good classroom control and everybody knows their expectations. The other thing I'll share with you is one size do not, does not fit all. What works for me may not work for you. What works for you may not work for me. You have to look at some of the strategies and select the one that works best for you that fits your personality. Um, I'm sure I'll receive some criticism for a couple of these because a couple of them are what I would consider external locus of control versus internal locus of control. Internal locus of control are, are those strategies that someone would use because the student wants to get better, the student wants to learn. External locus of control or when you have to give a student consequences for misbehavior. So we'll dig into that a little bit. And like I said, I've uh, actually received some criticism over a couple of the ideas, but if you don't like it, don't use it. All right, let's begin. Let's talk about some of these strategies. One very popular one, if you're having issues at the beginning of your class, is bell ringers. Put a problem or a journal entry on the board that the student should start working on immediately when they walk into the classroom. Again, you need to train them. You need to tell them your expectation is that when the bell rings, you're working on these problems each day. It could be something as simple as having the students keep a journal and have them do a journal entry each day. And then at the end of the uh, nine weeks, they can turn it in. So something to get them on task immediately so that they're already working and not talking. One of the frequent responses I saw to this problem on social media is build relationships with the students. And I absolutely agree. This is the most important, powerful thing you can do. But before you can begin the process of building relationships with the students, you have to have classroom control and get them to stop talking while you're talking. And I suspect a lot of the new teachers may not be posting that, but first, second year teachers may be struggling with some of those things, which is how do I get the students to stop talking so I can build the relationships? I've been doing this 25 years. When students walk into my classroom, I already have a teacher reputation. And one day I'm gonna do a video on teacher reputations because it, it, they know when they walk into my classroom that I have classroom control on day one. But if you're a new teacher and you've not established your, your teaching rep yet, you're gonna to have to start building it now. So there's a couple ways you can do it. You can use positive reinforcement. That's always uh, better than negative reinforcement if you can, but uh, handing out candy, giving away awards and stuff, or uh, pointing out the student who's modeling the proper behavior, those are all good. But there are some students who are never gonna to respond to that. If I do that with my AP kids, yeah, no problem. They're going to want to, for the most part, emulate the person is getting the positive uh, positive rewards. If I do that with my uh, lower end standard kids, a lot of them have not had positive reinforcement from anybody, sometimes of any consequence for years. So um, a lot of times they respond to negative consequences, which is if you do this, this is the consequence. If you talk while I'm talking, this is the consequence. And you may have to go that route until, and again, I stress this, until you can build the relationship and give them that positive reinforcement where you want to build them up. But until you get to that point, it may take you a couple of weeks of having to dole out consequences for misbehavior until you can build that relationship.
And not every student responds to positive uh, behavior. Not every student, if they have a family situation where they're constantly being yelled at, they may not respond to you at all. You may have to dole out some consequences. There's no absolute one way to teach. I, I, I see a lot of teachers and I applaud you. I appreciate it. I get it. You want to build the relationship. You want to be positive. But sometimes you need to start out with here are the consequences. Um, and it co goes back to real life, which is if you don't show up for, to work, you get fired. If you commit a crime, you go to jail. So sometimes there has to be consequences for ne negative behavior. I'm sure I'm going to get blasted for this on uh, uh, some of the comment section, but uh, that's just the way I see it, which is if you, you're welcome to talk to any assistant principal who's ever had me, they'll tell you I have incredible relationships with the kids, but I don't always use positive behavior. Sometimes I dole out consequences. All right, this is what I do. I count to three. I say one, two. When I hit three, it's totally silent. Three. Again, I'll tell the students on day one in my first class, every class on day one, every class on day two, every, we practice this for the first 10 days of school. I'll say one, two. It's totally silent. When I hit three, three. That works for me. It's worked for me for 25 years. Uh, and it's been flawless. It's, it's worked great. It may not work for you. What works for one person may not work for another. Another popular thing that teachers seem to use are doorbells. Now, I don't have a doorbell in my classroom and they must not be very difficult to install and get because I know that they're actually fairly popular with uh, elementary school teachers. So it, it requires practice and training. You practice and train just like you would choir or band or a sport. And you tell the students, when I ring the doorbell, we're totally silent and you practice it. And if you have to practice 15 minutes a day for the first week or two, that's time well spent because once you get it down, it's a beautiful thing. If you don't want something that deals with sound, flicker the lights, turn the lights on and off and tell the students, and again, train them, teach them. When I flicker the lights, that means that everybody needs to be silent by the time I flicker it the third time. Now, I did have one class one time who the one, two, it's totally silent, three wasn't working. So the former basketball coach and me said we can solve that problem relatively easy. So one day I came into class with my whistle and whenever I wanted them to be quiet, I, at first I would go one, two, it's totally silent, three, and they were disregarding me. And I was like, we're not gonna have that. So I would blow the whistle and they would stop talking. And after a day of this, they said, Mr. Cole, we don't like the whistle. I'd go, that's all right. I don't like it when you're talking. So let's make a deal. Let's go back to one, two, it's totally silent, three. And uh, I'll put the whistle away. We agreed, we got back on track, it worked fine. Now, this is the one thing I did receive some criticism on social media for. <laughs> If you don't want to, if that strategy doesn't fit your personality or your students, then uh, don't, don't use it. Use one of the other strategies. For me, I'm a former basketball coach. I pulled it off fine. Um, cell phones. If you are teaching elementary school, you can have some fun with it, which is program your cell phone with different noises and animal sounds and tell the students that once you start playing different sounds, it's their job to be silent and guess it by raising their hands. So you can have some fun with it. So hopefully you've got some uh, some strategies here to get them to stop talking while you're talking. And we'll talk about those students who don't respond to it in a minute. But for the most of, most of your students and most of your classes, once you practice it and put some repetition in place, um, they should respond to it and you can actually have fun with it. So if there's any strategies I've not mentioned, I'm sure there's a bunch, that you use in your classroom, feel free to drop in the comments in, in the comment section below so that other teachers can see what you're doing. The strategies that I just mentioned in the slide previously will work on the vast majority of students, but you will occasionally have some students who either don't have the self-discipline or are purposely being disrespectful. And I'm gonna to talk to you about how to deal with them. I've had some, some classes where occasionally I have some students who literally 
will not stop it talking to each other. And I pulled them out in the hall and said, look, you two keep talking to each other even when I'm talking. How do we solve that? And the students, to their credit, said, Mr. Cole, as long as we're sitting next to each other, we literally can't help but talk to each other. And I said, okay, I, res I respect that. I respect your honesty on this. Let's just move you so that you're not sitting next to each other. And they, they're like, please do. And I did, and it solved the problem. That, that's, a, that's a true story, and it's happened more than once. Students will, if you ask them how to manage their behavior, will often give you strategies that will work. That's really the first thing you should lead off with when you're talking about student misbehavior is, if you were, if I, if you were me, how would you manage this behavior? How can we deal with it and get it fixed? Now, sometimes you'll get students who are just flat out being disrespectful on purpose. And you need to learn not to take that personally. Very, very rarely, almost never, does it have to do anything with you personally. Usually it's something going on in their personal life um, and it's leaked into the classroom. And this is gonna happen frequently. Frequently you're gonna have students who bring their personal baggage into the classroom and they end up taking it out on you or being disres disrespectful on you. You're the innocent bystander receiving the brunt of the attack. So when that happens, again, meet me outside in the hall, and sometimes they'll open up to you and tell you what's going on, sometimes they won't. If they don't and they continue to be disrespectful, then I recommend that you watch my video on how to deal with a disruptive student. Student behavior is really a process. Um, it's, it's problem solving. At the end of the day, Almost always, not always, but almost always, you can get to the root of the problem if you use a problem solving approach as far as managing the behavior. And quite often you can actually find out what the problem is and direct the student to somebody who can help them help solve that problem. So sometimes if you have a chatty student or a disrespectful student, there's something much deeper going on. And if you dig deeper, you may find some things that require uh, getting other professionals involved. So I hope that these strategies help you. I hope you've learned some things from this video. I highly recommend you watch my video on disruptive student behavior. I'm going to put a link to it right now. Uh, if you've learned anything from the video, please hit the like button. Maybe think about subscribing. And thank you for spending time with me. If you're a teacher, if you're a hero, love that you're my colleague, Cole Sturrell.